Good morning all. Today I thought I'd try and take this um, Bluetooth speaker project forward, the supercapacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project, uh, by connecting the loudspeaker that I bought. I actually ordered two and I only got one, but the seller has agreed to uh, put that matter right now by sending another one. Um, but for today I can only connect that one to this amplifier board. This is an amplifier with a Bluetooth transceiver on it. So I'm going to hook that up to here, put some power on here, and see if I can get some sound out of it. So I've got a little bit of red and black wire here. I'm going to solder those to the speaker, shove them in here. Now, has this got uh, plus and minus? Yes, it has got plus and minus marked on the speaker. What about this? Let's have a look. Well, no, this doesn't really have positive and negative marked on it. It doesn't really matter which way around you connect it. Um, I suppose we could look at uh, how these tracks run into these chip pins. Uh, these are the low numbered chip pins. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll print out a, um, a pinout diagram of this TDA, or whatever it is, 7492P, and uh, just see if there's any sort of positive and negative thing marked on there. So this is a device block diagram, and it looks like uh, each channel, this whole block diagram is actually just one channel. So you could call this either the left or the right. Um, it has two drivers, one which it calls negative and one which it calls positive. So out N and out P. Both of them can pull uh, to VCC or to ground. So they'll pull first that way and then that way. So there is a negative and a positive. Uh, let's have a look at the other sheet. This is the pinout diagram and it looks like the out negatives for channels A and B are in the middle of the chip. Uh, 8 and 9 is B, 10 and 11 is A. The out positives are towards the outsides of the chip, so 16 and 17 is positive channel A, positive channel B. So the negatives are in the middle, the positives are at the edge. Let's take a look at this board. So the negatives are in the middle, uh, actually these two pairs of pins here because they go off to these two inductors and then the positives are on the outside so the two negatives on these connectors are actually on the inner connectors and the positives are on the outer connectors right let's do some stripping strip that one it never seems to auto eject why doesn't it auto eject and strip the red one. Hmm. That exploded. Right, um, bit of tinning. Let's get that tinned. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't have chucked it down on the mat right at that moment. Let that set a bit first and tin the red one. Okay, and let's do the other ends. This is really weird. I'm tinning these uh, lugs here and the soldering iron is sticking to the lug. But it's because of magnetism, because of this big magnet. Not anything else, but it just feels a bit odd. Right, so the negatives were these middle pins. So for this speaker, I'm going to put that in there and the positive there. Uh, on the other speaker, of course, they'd be crossed over, but I don't have a second speaker, so uh, let's just try this with just one speaker. See whether this amplifier minds having uh, no load on the other channel. We'll soon find out. Right, I'm going to power this up with uh, 12 volts from my solar power system. That's 13.6 at the moment. Wait for the bang. Wait for the lights. There are no lights. That's quite interesting. Oh, I haven't switched it on. Yeah, OK. That's fine. There is now a light. Now, there are two LEDs. Ah, there they go. Oh, that's interesting. That made a very similar noise to uh, my Orky powered speaker. So I think it's looking for a Bluetooth sending device. Hmm, where's my phone? Uh, right, that's come up as Sanwoo Audio, which I seem to remember it said it would 
uh, in the eBay listing. The Orkey Apollo is not switched on at the moment. So that's connected. Let's see if I can play something through it. Right, check this out. Play. Good morning all. It's post bag. This one is big and heavy with lots of cylindrical objects so in it. So that works, doesn't it? And they are. Let's try the volume. Supercapacitors. So these are uh, 2.5 volts. Yeah, so the volume up and down buttons work. Supercapacitors, there are six of them here. They're marked as Nippon a, Chemicon. Sounds a little bit. DL cap, DLA. Distorted at full volume. Centigrade, 2.5 volts, 700 farads. But it certainly works. Uh, positive. Right, the next thing I want to try is this uh, AUX input which uh, a lot of people said they were having trouble with. It just didn't work. Some people said it was an output. But I have traced the um, the uh, tracks through from the connections on this socket through to input pins on the audio amplifier. So it's definitely an input. But it seems that uh, there are problems of interoperability with the Bluetooth module. Let's find out. And certainly um, I'm not getting anything touching the inputs on this uh, connector here. So nothing at all, it seems to be muted. So let's shove some music through it from YouTube's music library. Right, I've got some uh, YouTube copyright free music playing through there, but there's no sound. So let's unplug it and plug it back in. And it plays for about one second and then it seems that something is muting the audio, uh, probably some sort of interaction with the Bluetooth module, but I don't quite know how that works because it looked to me like this socket runs through a capacitor to the input and this module runs through this op amp and then through a capacitor to the input. So I don't know quite why it's holding it down and muting it. Let's just try unplugging it and plugging it again. So it's there just for about a second and a half. And I'm just wondering whether pressing any of these buttons, play, next, and all this stuff would have any effect, but I don't know, it doesn't seem to. Let's just try switching the power off there. I presume that's the same as unplugging it. Yeah, it just plays very briefly. So it's a bit strange. Uh, now it seems to be playing continuously. I think maybe the Bluetooth module got bored and just gave up. Now, interestingly, do these volume buttons work? No, they don't. So it's a fixed volume when you put uh, an AUX input into there. But that's playing now. Now, is that because my phone is disconnected from the Bluetooth module? I don't really know. Right, I've managed to get this to play but only by using a bit of trickery. Let me just uh, pause that for a moment. So what I'm doing is I'm playing via Bluetooth from my phone, uh, John Cage's four minutes and 33 seconds. And that, it seems, enables the Bluetooth module. And the Bluetooth module has a mute pin on it. And the amplifier has a mute input. So it seems what happens is that when you're not playing Bluetooth, the module mutes the amplifier. There's a mute and a standby pin, and they both run up here to a couple of little um, resistors. And it seems that the mute pin is actually a track that runs around the edge there. Let me just uh, see if I can shine a light on that. I'll do that from behind. Uh, there's a little thin track that runs, where is it? There it is. That runs from the module up round there and to the mute pin. So I could cut that and stop this mute thing working. I think it's probably still taking in audio. Yeah, so that's taking in audio, but only because I'm playing a track through uh, Bluetooth. As I say, John Cage's four minutes and 33 seconds, and we all know what that sounds like. Now, as soon as I pause that John Cage track, it mutes the amplifier, so the aux signal doesn't get through either. That's really annoying. So I was using my multimeter to try and check the uh, voltage on the mute pin on the audio amp. And in fact, what I've done now is I've put the uh, probes on common and 
10 amps, they're actually the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter because all I'm doing is shorting the uh, mute pin to plus 3.3 volts like this. And I can just enable the amplifier just by putting 3.3 volts on that mute pin. So um, it's a fairly simple mod. You just simply force the mute pin to 3.3 volts at all times and the thing will play from the AUX input. So here on the application uh, schematic for the TDA 7492P, it shows the mute pin and the standby pin and uh, it shows the mute pin as going through a 33K to either plus 3.3 volts or ground. So I think if I just solder uh, a suitable resistor of that sort of order uh, between mute and plus 3.3 volts, I can force the amp to be on all the time. Right, so there we are. I've stuck a, a 10K resistor between the mute pin and plus 3.3 volts. That's held up uh, regardless. Now the signal coming from the Bluetooth chip goes through a 104, so that's 100K. So it's not going to affect the output of the Bluetooth chip. And the audio is now on all the time. If I pull my camera out and press play, that should start my it, um, coatings on the. That's bulb. my phone playing so an old colors. video. So they're quite pretty, but um... now if I pause that, and then the module would go into mute, so it would mute the amp, but now it can't. And now I can play my nice jazzy track, which. Uh, just pause that a minute. Uh, just in case anyone asks, it's by Silent Partner and its chances. And that plays fine. I'm not quite sure why it's necessary to mute the amp whenever the Bluetooth unit uh, is not playing anything. It makes a bit of a nonsense of the AUX input. But anyway, that's now overridden. We've got quite a bit of movement on this speaker. So I think it's going to have some quite nice bass. Yeah, tremolo. Nice. Right, now that that's sorted, let's uh, try some Toreador. Just interested in the... Well, I think that sounds pretty good. And uh, now some bluesy vibes. I'm just quite interested in how much displacement on this cone there is. There's quite a lot. So I think this thing's going to have quite good bass. Is any of this getting hot? The inductors are warm. What about the chip? Yeah, it's just warm. So I mean, everything seems to be behaving itself quite well. Right, now I want to see whether it will, in principle, run from these capacitors. I don't know whether there's any charge in these at the moment. There should be, because uh, there's no load on it. So let's plug something into the output of the capacitors. There is a fuse on the top there, just in case this goes disastrously wrong. Let's plug that into there. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's play Bluesy Vibes. Ah, now why can't I hear anything? Bluesy Vibes is playing. Maybe there's not enough voltage on here. I don't know. I don't know what the voltage is. The red light's on. But I can't hear anything. Let's just go back to my 12 volts from my solar power system. Yeah, that's working. Must be low voltage on that. Maybe I'll go and charge that up. There isn't much sun today, but I could stick a solar panel on it for a while. Yeah, so that capacitor bank was at about 7.5 volts. And uh, on the data sheet it says that um, the chip has a wide single supply operation of 8 to 26 volts. So it certainly doesn't work below 8 volts. So I'm just charging that up outside. Now I noticed something else on this uh, application circuit, which is the LC filter components, which are these inductors. 
and resistors and capacitors between the outputs of the amplifier and the speakers. And it's got different um, component uh, selections for the different speaker impedances. Now I bought eight ohm speakers and it says 33 microhenries. And you can see that uh, on the board, these are 33 microhenries. So it certainly seems like the um, output components here have been uh, selected for an 8 ohm speaker, even though I seem to remember the eBay listing talked about this can be anywhere between 4 and 16 ohms. Um, I think that's the range, yeah, 4 and 16 ohms. Certainly seems that it's been set up for 8 ohms. Right, the capacitor bank is up to 10 and a half volts. Uh, I did say it wasn't very sunny today, didn't I? Let's see how much bluesy jazz we can get out of this thing. At that voltage before it drops so much that it cuts out. I suppose really I should have a meter on that capacitor bank, shouldn't I? Let's stop that and get a DVM. Right, now we can watch the... Uh, it's all a bit of a mess this, but we can watch the voltage go down as I turn the music on, so... Let's watch the speaker cone moving as well. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? That's going to last quite a while. Well, I think that could run for quite a while, uh, playing music at uh, a reasonably loud volume. But anyway, I think you can see that uh, it is going to run for quite a while on these supercapacitors, especially if we uh, start them off at something like uh, 20 volts, and they can run all the way down to 8 or wherever this cuts out. I don't quite know where that is yet, uh, but perhaps I'll play around with this this afternoon and see at what voltage it uh, absolutely cuts out. But anyway, for the moment, that's good. Um, I've got over the mute problem with my little uh, 10K resistor mod. It obviously does work from supercapacitors, but then it would. The speaker works. I don't think I've blown up the other channel by not having a speaker. We'll soon find out. Uh, for the moment, I'm happy. Cheerio.